This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Resurrection Day. These are our announcements. The St. James Child Care Center is now hiring teachers for infants and three-year-olds. Anyone who will have the love for children is asked to please apply in person at the center or call and speak to our director, Sister Patricia Ward, at 843-688-5719. The Young Adult Missionaries of Greater St. James will be hosting a Young Adult mi Mixer for all young adults ages 21 to 50 on the fourth Sunday, April 28th, after the worship service in the New Fellowship Hall. All young adults are invited to come mix and mingle with each other and to get to know the available ministries in the church. During this time, there will also be a children's social hosted by the YPD in the Old Fellowship Hall. All children are invited to attend. There will be a Charleston District Spring Revival at Adams Amy Church, April 3rd through the 5th at 7 o'clock p.m., and they're asking for a uh, one of the Greater St. James choirs to please be able to sing on Wednesday, April 3rd. Save the date. Saturday, April 6th, 2024, 9 a.m., there will be a local lay organization training. Also, the YPDers will be selling hot dogs immediately after the training. Everyone is invited. The Pineapolis, oops, sorry, one more. Saturday, Same thing, okay. The Pineapolis Alzheimer's Self-Help Club, an empowerment group of dementia caregivers in the rural Berkeley County. If you're caring for someone with memory loss, please join for fellowship on the third Tuesday, 10.30 a.m. to noon at the Pineapolis Community Church. Canaan Christian Church will be having a soup kitchen on Saturday, April 20th from 12 p.m until 2 p.m. Also from Canaan, there's a building fund Sunday dinners, food, fellowship, and families, April 14th at 12.30 p.m., $10 donation. Canaan Christian Church will also be having the senior ministry will be hosting the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, Wednesday, April 17th, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. On behalf of the family of the late Leonard Lee Smith, we greatly appreciate all of your prayers, gifts, and words of kindness in our time of bereavement. Thank you. We ask that you please continue to pray for all of our sick and shut-in, as well as all bereaved families. Birthdays this week. Faith Breed on today, Brother Avery Gibbs and Brother Theodore Simmons Jr. on Monday, Charlene Mazik on Tuesday, Arthedius Cloudin on Wednesday, with Benjamin Warren, Sister Lorene Williamson, Keontae Khalif on Thursday, Daniel Reed on Friday, Gabriel Levine and Lenora Brown on Saturday. These are announcements for this week. Please govern yourselves accordingly. We will now, oh, one more thing. We have some Easter treats right after service for our young people. So please go, when you leave, please go to one of our conference room and have your children get a treat. And on behalf, Sister Fair, could you please come forward? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. There will be a food giveaway on... April 10th from 3 to 5. So we need volunteers and also ask your family, friends, neighbors, anyone to please come out on that day. On behalf of our youth and our Sunday school and everyone, we would like to pre present you and Reverend Fair. Oh, goodness. Easter basket. <laughs> Their Easter basket. And... <laughs> Reverend Fair, I see some Oreos in there. They tell me that's your favorite. So, yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I got an Easter bag. <laughs> Be careful. 
We will now hear from Sister Monique Pringle and after Sister Tamika Flagger. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm here to talk about the short film that was written and directed by myself. Um, could I get all of Team Swag and anybody that was in our short film, can you please stand? All our actors, background actors. This is our very own St. James. Um, it will be premiering today on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube at 2 p.m. I ask that you please support, like, encourage, send a word of encouragement. As you can see, our young people here, um, they did an awesome job. I'm so proud of y'all. I can't wait for you all to see it. Um, so please keep them encouraged. It's very rare that we have young people who's willing to come out and do certain things for the Lord. Amen. We go to our football, basketball, tennis, golf, everything else. But, you know, say an encouraging word to these young people, especially our young men. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for your time. Good morning and happy Easter Day. Good morning, once again, good morning. I, today I'm representing Belay, and we just wanted to reiterate our program that we will be having on April 6th, this coming Saturday. It is our lay training. And as you know, anyone other than the, the members of the pulpit are lay. So this is an opportunity for you to learn more about your role here within the AME faith. And um, we have training for all different levels from the youth all the way to the um, oldest members. Um, so we definitely encourage you to come out and enjoy yourself. And you will also get an opportunity to support our YPD with our hot dog sale. They will be um, doing um, hot dogs for $7. Um, that comes with chips and a drink. So please come out and support um, them for that. Also, with the YPD, if we can get a head count for the mid-year missionary meeting, that will be on the 12th, I believe, um, the 13th. Um, if we can, definitely see Sister Sylvia Wright to make sure your children are accounted for. We need to have this head count by Wednesday of this week um, so that we can make sure your children are accounted for in the number. I believe they're serving lunch, so they want to get an accurate head count um, for the mid-year meeting. Thank you. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. I, I, before I forget, I do, want, I do want to say we won't have noonday Bible study this week. It will start back on the 10th. Amen? Start back on the 10th. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. It is Resurrection Sunday. It is the day our Lord got up. It is, it is, it is, it is letting us know that God is not dead. Our Lord is not dead. The tomb was empty. I, they, they can, they, they, they'll let you know in, in the Baha'i faith where, where their Savior, where he died at. And they, they'll, they'll, let you, they'll let you know the Muslim where, where, where Muhammad died. But, but, but Jesus, if you go back to the tomb where they say they buried our Lord, it's empty. He has risen. And for that and for that alone, I say praise God from whom all blessings flow.
I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feast is standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For they are not close to seven and a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the sins of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that have planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. Blessed they that dwell in the house. Lord, have love for the habitation, the place where their honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing his praises. Our choir will come with our hymn of praise. Brother Droz will lead us in the prayer. And Reverend Foxworth will come with our scripture. Amen. Amen. We've come to celebrate this morning.
let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting thou art God. Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we come on this Resurrection Sunday. We come with a praise on our lips and thanksgiving in our heart. Father, we come to lift you up this morning, for we realize, O oh Lord, that you're worthy of the praise. Father, we thank you for what your son Jesus did on Calvary's rugged cross. Father, we thank you for this beautiful plan of salvation. For while we were yet still in sin, you looked beyond our faults and saw our needs and provided for us this beautiful plan of salvation. We give you thanks and praises this morning that it was just like you said it would be. When the women went to the tomb this morning, he wasn't there. He has risen and he lives within all of us. And we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for what you've done for us. And we, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough, O oh Lord. We come this morning with a renewed spirit, O oh Lord. For we know we can move forward. For we live and have our being in your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you bless us. Keep us. Go before us as a leading lamb, behind us as a guide and a protective angel, shielding us from all her harm and danger. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with us in all that we undertake to do. And before we do anything else, Lord, we call on you. We call on the name of Jesus Christ. For we realize that when we call on you, there's a change in the atmosphere, O oh Father. When we call on you, sinners turn to you, O oh Heavenly Father. When we call on you, blinded eyes are open, O oh Lord. When we call on you, broken hearts are mended, O oh Lord. Father, when we call on you, we realize that there's no other name in heaven and earth to do us any good other than the name of your son Jesus and we ask that you continue to bless us and keep us Father I pray for the sin sick among us those men and women who seem to be so unconcerned about their soul salvations we ask that you awake them and shake them before it's a day and a time too late help them to realize oh Lord that they have a soul to save, or one that will be lost, and that the decisions on this earth will determine their destiny, for we realize that there's no repentance after death. We pray for the sick and the afflicted, the poor and the needy, the prison-bound men and women all over the world. We ask that you help them to realize that you are God, and besides you there is no other, and that all powers in heaven and earth are trusted in your hand. Father, we ask that you continue to bless and keep them, O oh Lord. And Father, I pray for those of us who are trying to serve you in the newness of life, O oh Lord. Father, we pray and ask that you would order our steps so that we might be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh Lord. We ask, O oh Heavenly Father, that you look down on us with eyes of pity and a heart of tender compassion. Father, we ask that you just continue to be our God, and we ask that we'll continue to be your children. Father, I pray for the shepherd of this flock, the one that you've placed here to sh be the overseer of this congregation, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for him. We thank you for the life that he lives. We thank you for his commitment and his dedication to his calling, O oh Lord. And we ask that you 
Give him a word today, a word that your people stand so desperately in need of. And Father, as he come before us, we ask that you would hide him behind your cross. Let there be less of him and more of you. Father, we ask that you would allow the words of his mouth and the meditations of his heart be acceptable in your sight. We thank you for his family, and we thank you for the service that they give in this congregation, O oh Lord. And Father, I pray for those that continually hold up the prophet's hand. I pray for Reverend Foxworth and her family, Reverend Tucker and his family, Lysenshwit and Nelson. Father, continue to give them that courage to stand before your people and preach that convincing gospel, that gospel that tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for we realize that we're living in a terrible world. Father, the signs are here that the time is at hand. It may not be in our lifetimes, O oh Lord, but we know that you're coming back because you promised us that you would. You said, I was going away, but I was going to prepare a place and I'll be coming back so that I can receive you unto me and you might be where I am. For that, we stand on that promise and we look forward to that, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you just help us to continue to lift up your name. For you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Father, thank you for all you've done for us in the past. Thank you for what you're doing for us right now. And Father, we give you thanks and praises for what you'll do for us in the future. Lord, we don't know what the future holds for us, but thank God we know who holds the future. And Father, we realize that one day we're going to have to give up the works on this side, oh Lord. And Father, when that day shall come, we pray that we would have lived our life in a manner that we would have the blessed assurance that death is not the end, but just a doorway to a richer and sweeter life in you. We ask these and all other blessings in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.
on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on and worship him. 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 Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. 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 Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. what the women felt like when they went to an empty tomb and they saw the grave clothes folded in place but there was no body there who worship worship would just break out if we just think about it hallelujah our old testament scripture today will come from psalm 16 and I will begin reading at verse 8. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Mm. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me, O God to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Our New Testament scripture comes from the book of Mark, beginning at chapter one. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be afraid, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. 
she went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. God's word for you, his people.
Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Anybody glad he decided to stay on the cross this morning? See, that's why every day he's worthy to be prayed. Now, I understand this is Resurrection Sunday, but every morning he wakes you up. He resurrects you to a brand new day. And so I dare not come to church on Sunday morning. And he's worthy. You, but I get excited thinking about what he did for me on Calvary he did for us what we could not do for ourselves thank you choir for ushering us into the presence of the Lord and letting the Lord use you I just I just believe if God woke you up this morning and God gave you his best. That when you come in the house, you need to give God his best. And give him all he's worthy of. The best praise you got, you need to give that to God. We'll give it to a football team. We'll give it to a basketball team. We'll put on a jersey and run around and act crazy. And nobody on that team know anything about you. But there was a God that woke you up this morning. No, you didn't act right. No, you didn't talk right. No, you do things that's wrong. But he still loved you this morning. And so I don't know about you, but I came to cheer on Jesus this morning. In spite of all that we do, and in spite of all that we don't do for him, he still blesses us. See, man loves us because of something. Because something we do for them or because of who we are. Because, But God loves us in spite of. That's awesome. Thank you, choir. We thank God for this anointed choir, for these anointed musicians. We thank God for the hospitality team. We thank God for the audio video. How they make these presentations every Sunday morning. And I want you all to know the choir, the hospitality, the audio video. There's somebody has to get this stuff ready for y'all before you get here. They just don't show up. And we want to thank them. And, and I want to thank the folk in the, in the blue shirts. Got, Got me so full this morning. 
got me feeling so good. And, and I thank God this morning was wonderful. Y'all, y'all have really, y'all have really been blessing us. And the church, I just, you know, I just, I tell you all privately, but I want to tell you publicly also, this church has been so busy with so many activities. And you all have stepped up time after time after time after time after time. And I know you all get tired, but the grit still is good. Amen. <laughs> God is awesome. God is awesome. I thank God for uh, Evangelist Simmons and, and Henry Simmons Sr. this morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for them in the house this morning. For he's worthy to be praised. I, I, stand, I stand to acknowledge our guests. I know we had quite a few, but I just have uh, two cards this morning. Um, Vanda Green, Vando Green, um, Lena Bell Sprite, if I pronounce that, if that sound like almost your name, because that hand, I'm looking at the hand right now, so they're all on me, amen, God bless you, if we want, if you just saying, we just thank you, God bless you. just stand for one moment that we can acknowledge your presence, all of our guests, if I don't, if I didn't call your name, just stand for one moment, all of our guests, if anybody invited you, or you just stopped by and said, I want to worship here this morning, just stand up for one moment, so we can just tell God, thank you for your presence here, amen, yeah. amen. Our prayer is that Sunday be preached, prayed a song that would delight your heart, and you'll come back and worship with us again. Yeah. My prayer is that you felt our love before you heard our voices. Yeah. Amen. And if you're looking for a church home, we offer Greater St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church. Well, we're not a perfect church. So if you're looking for people that's perfect, ah, we working on being perfected. All right, so, so just come on in with us. And let's get perfect in the eyesight of God. Amen. We may not be a perfect church, but I guarantee you this. I believe we perfect just for you. Amen. Amen. For the Bible lets us know only those who planted in the household of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. So come and be planted with us. Choir, would you, would you acknowledge our guests? to this place. Amen? Amen. Uh, it is offering time here at Greater St. James and a time to worship God in our giving because I've learned and understand and know that whatever I have, God gave it to me. And so I find it not robbery to give back unto him a portion which he has given unto us. I could not catch my next breath if God did not give it to me. And so we ask for those who have your offering, if you would put it in your right hand and after uh, we bless it, uh, the stewards will come down these two aisles and just pass it to the end of this aisle and to the end of this aisle and the stewards will come and lift your offering. Offering is not about flesh, but it's about you letting God know how you feel about him. I promise you, I promise you, if you give unto God, the Bible lets us know. He says, I will heist up a window. I'm a living witness. I'm a, I'm a li I, I wouldn't be saying it if I didn't believe. I wouldn't even be standing here if this thing wasn't real. <laughs> I'd still be out in the street. Amen. But it's real. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know he's real? Amen. Amen. So we ask that you put your offering in your right hand and just lift it for one moment. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father God, for allowing us this opportunity to give back unto you a portion which you've given unto us. Father God, we understand and know that every good and perfect gift flow from you. So, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to show our love through giving. Not into giving on to flesh, but giving unto your spirit who keeps us, who wraps his arms around us in spite of, 
And so we thank you, Father God. We ask right now that you bless the hand that is holding this offering. Bless them in their coming and bless them in their going. Bless them, Father. Bless anybody who's connected to the person that's holding their offering right now. Father God, I ask that you bless their house. Bless wherever they walk. Bless where their foot trembles and moves and, and being. Bless them, Lord God. Bless their family. Bless their homes. Bless their jobs. Bless the giver. For we understand and know that, Father God, that when you wanted to show your love for us, you gave. You gave your only begotten son. And so we thank you now for this opportunity to give back unto you. It is in Jesus' name in which we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. things come of you, O oh Lord. In the presence of the Lord, uh, we'll have a selection from this wonderful choir, and then I'll give my Easter speech.
Tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your mother, and your father. He's not dead, he's alive. Tell him he saved you, and he healed you. Did he touch you? Did he save you? I know he's not dead. Run, Mary, run, Mary. Go tell him he is alive. He's not dead, you're a witness, he's alive. I know church that he's alive, he is risen, oh Lord. Yeah. Run, Mary, run. The sun is going down. I said, run, Mary, run, you know. The sun is going down. Come on, run, Mary, run. Said he meet me. I know he'll meet me, yeah. One of these corners and it won't be long. You'll look for me and I'll be gone. Going over yonder to sing and shout. There'll be nobody to put me out. We thank God for the Holy Spirit and for confirmation. And I think just where the choir ended that selection, I'm going to end the text right there also. So I told y'all 1 through 12, I'm going to do 1 through 8. I'm going to start right there with Mary start that. Amen. That's all right with you all. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Amen. Now when the Sabbath has passed, and Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Sodom, brought spices that they might anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. When the sun had risen, and they said to themselves, who will roll the stone away from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw the stone had already been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But Jesus said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Everybody say, he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go and tell the disciples and Peter. They will go before them into Galilee, and there they will see him, as he said to you. So go quickly, and they fled and from the tomb, and they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. I'm going to stop right where the choir stopped at verse 7. But go tell Peter. And I'll meet you in Galilee. So just for a little while, our subject is Sunday morning changes everything. Yes. Sunday morning changes everything. Thank God for the audio video team so they can... I can sit in my seat back there and change stuff, and they got it. Our God is awesome. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you, Father God. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for how you've kept us in spite of ourselves. You blessed us in spite of our actions, our thoughts, and our words. You still blessed us anyway. But you brought us back to a brand new resurrection Sunday morning. 
So we thank you. Thank you for breathing us, breathing us life into our lungs this morning. And I just believe what David says that whatever has breath should praise you to the Lord. So regardless of what anybody may do on my right or my left, I've got to praise you for myself. Because nobody knows how you have kept me. Nobody knows how you delivered me. Nobody knows how you have covered me. Nobody knows what we've been through but you and me. And I thank you this morning. Have your way in this place. Let thy will be done. It is in Jesus' name in which we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Sunday morning changes everything. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, and I won't be before you long, but the Bible is a love letter to man. For in the Noonday Bible study, we started, we, are, we started at Genesis and we're walking all the way through the book. And from the very beginning, it talks about how God loves us. All 66 books, all 11, 9, 11, 39 chapters in the new and 27 in the old talk about the love God has for us. All 1,189 chapters, all 773,682 words are love letter from God to us. I, I'm so glad that God took the time to let us know how he feels about us. Because there are people in our lives that we won't even take the time to tell them, I love you, brother, I love you, sister. But on that day when God calls them home, everybody's falling out and crying, have never told them you love them while they were still breathing. I want you to know they can't hear you then. I don't know. If somebody loves me, I need to hear it while I'm still on this side. Amen. And not only hear it, but you got to do some things. Amen. Yeah. Because, because I want to let you know some talk is cheap. <laughs> talk don't pay no bills. Talk, talk don't keep the lights on. Talk don't keep the car in the driveway. You got to show me, baby. And so, and so God shows us in this text, he, he shows us that he loves all of us despite who we are. Aren't you glad that God does not pick and choose? For he said in his word that he have no respect of person, regardless of who you are, where you come from, God loves you. It is shown in this text about everything that God has went through through his son, Jesus Christ, to show us how much we love him. And so when we come to God, it is not because we should come out of fear, but we come out of love. When somebody does something for you or to you, you ought to understand that I, I'm doing this because I love you, not because I'm afraid of you. And surely the Bible lets us know, see, when they fear God, what it means, they reverence God. Uh, and so the Bible lets us know that God loves us and is exemplified in this text and that he loves everybody. And I want you to see how the text starts out. The Bible said that there was some Marys there. There was Mary, one called Mary Magdalene. Y'all need to understand what's going on in the text. See, the follow of the Lord, you don't have to be perfect. Don't let church folk fool you that you got to be perfect to follow Jesus. I want you to know you don't have to be perfect because ain't none of us in here perfect. And I heard folk even on the outside say, I don't want to go to church because there are too many hypocrites. Well, what do you think was going to happen? Because all of us in here trying to get right. I want you to know right now, you can't get right out there because all you're going to do, you think, you think, you think it's the hypocrites in here. How about out there? You better come on in here with all of us in here trying to get it right. Every Sunday. Sunday morning when I come in here, I want to be better than I was last week. See, what I'm trying to tell you, the pastor fed that you see right now, this is the worst I'm going to be because on next Sunday, I'm going to be better. I'm going to preach better. I'm going to act better. I'm going to talk better. I'm going to pray better because I'm going to be with Jesus. For the Bible lets us know every day with the Lord gets sweeter and sweeter. Yes, yes, yes. And so I am so glad that the Bible is written like this because folk will make you think, well, you got to be perfect. And then when they found out somebody in the church done something, oh, Lord, what you thought was going to happen? They are not perfect, just like you are not perfect. But because of Jesus, because of Jesus, the Bible said that Mary Magdalene followed Jesus. And if you follow the text, at the end of the day at the cross, she was at his feet. Mary Magdalene was the one that Jesus dried out seven demons. You hear what I say? Mary Magdalene. And the Bible lets us know. Theologians said Mary Magdalene came from a place called Magdala. 
And really it was a place called Magnolia. It was like a red light town. You know what I'm talking about? The red light district uh, where, where they didn't dress, have all on their clothes. And, and they were out there doing all kind of things. And that's really where she came from. That's why they call her Mary of Magdala. Because she didn't come from uh, off the hill. Uh, she didn't come out of a brick house. Um, she, did, she didn't come uh, uh, riding a fine car with a, with a swimming pool. But she came off a side of town like my side of town. She came off Edisto Drive. She came off across the tracks. She came out of Long Ridge. She came down at the bottom. And God still loved her. Y'all better hear what I'm trying to tell you. Because one thing about God, God don't care where you're from. If you praise him, he'll love you. If you worship him, he'll love you. He don't look at your background. Show sure forward will look at you funny, but God. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I am so glad. I'm so glad because he allowed old country boy like me. And so, and so he had Mary Magdalene with him. You, I want to tell somebody, you don't have to be a perfect person. You don't have to have a perfect past, a perfect life. But one thing you do have to do, you have to walk with a perfect God. You better hear what I'm trying to tell you. And so, and so, and so, and so the Bible lets us know that here was Mary Magdalene. See, that's, that's why the enemy wanted him dead. Y'all better hear what I'm trying to tell you. Because see, what happened was when Jesus was walking the earth and when he was bringing people into the fold, he wasn't worrying about who they were. Because even the religious leaders said, oh, he eat with sinners. He go, to, he go to sinners' house. And they didn't like that because they wanted to come to the church where they were so they could give their money. And, but Jesus said, oh, no. Let them give unto the Son of Man. Let them give unto the Son of God today. And so they didn't like it because Jesus messed with those who look like they didn't know the Lord. But I want you to know and understand something. Just because you look holy don't mean you're holy. Just because you got a church dress don't mean you know church. Just because you come every Sunday don't mean you know everything. But I want you to understand and know God will take somebody just in case I decide I don't want to preach. That I don't got too big headed and I don't want to preach. God will take somebody from under the tree drinking liquor all day long clean him up, bring him in here and stand before you and preach the roof down. God says I don't need any. All I need is somebody with a willing spirit. I want to know this morning anybody in here willing to praise God. Anybody in here willing to give God all you got. See when I woke up this morning I said I'm going to give God all I got. I don't know about you but I'm a fourth quarter preacher. Oh yes. Oh yes. I don't know if you know what that means or not. But I'm a fourth quarter man. That means the longer I go, the better I feel. The more I preach, the more I want to preach. The more I sing, the more I want to sing. The more I praise him, the more I want to praise him. The more I worship, the more I want. Oh, 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 Matthews, you know what I'm talking about. The longer I go, the better it get. Because when you go with God, God gave it to you. Uh, yes, yes. See, some of us, some of us, some of us, some of us first quarter Christians. They'll come out. Y'all been watching their game. They'll come out and hit a three-pointer in the first couple of seconds of the game. You don't hit no more for them the rest of the game. It is when trouble comes. In crunch time. Do you know who the real Christians are? Because it's going to be crunch time. There are going to be time that folk lie on you, talk about you, call you everything but a child of God. Can you still walk with him? <laughs> can you still bless his name? When you've been misused and misunderstood, can you still bless him? Well, well, the text tells us that God showed his love on the cross. First, he showed his love with those who were around him, loving in and everybody. Jesus says, I came for the sick. For those who are healed and well, they don't need a doctor. And so, and so he showed it on the scene of the world. The world used the cross to kill people. The Roman Empire used the cross to humiliate people. They humiliated our Lord on that Friday. But you remember what I told you, but Sunday was coming. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They humiliated him. They, they beat him up and they put him on the cross. But on the cross was where he showed his love. On the cross where he showed how much he loved us. On the cross when he did not come down, he showed us how much he loved us. 
Because the Bible lets us know that. They talked about him and said, if you are who you are, come down. But since he loved us, since he loved us just how we were, oh, he said, I'm not going to come down. He said, I could've, he could have came down at any time. He could have called thousands of angels down to destroy everything around. He said, but I got to stay on the cross. He said, I'm going to stay on the cross for the liar. I'm going to stay on the cross for the backbite. I'm going to stay on the cross for the whole monger. I'm going to stay on the cross for the alcoholic. I'm going to stay on the cross for the drug addict. I'm going to stay on the cross for the adulterer. I'm going to stay on the drug cross for the gambler. Aren't you glad this morning? I don't have to call you your problem. I don't have to call you your issue. But one thing I do know, the Bible says that all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. I may not know what you have done, and you may not know what I have done, but whatever it is, uh, he put it and he took it on the cross. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that he didn't come down on that Friday night. I'm so glad that he put my sins on his back. I want to know this morning, are there anybody in here who was saved by the by Jesus Christ. Anybody in here who was sinner saved by grace. So maybe you ain't never done nothing. But that's not my testimony. I'm so glad that whatever I done, he took it to the cross. And the people thought, so oh, we got him now. But oh, all the cross did is make somebody write of him at the cross. I said at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart were rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now, I said now, I said now, I said right now, I'm happy. Anybody happy in here? Your sins have been given. Aren't you happy in here? Your sins have been given. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so, it was the people around him showed his love. It was the cross that showed his love. And then they thought they had him. You read him when she told you this morning that they beat on their chest. Oh, yeah, you know how it is. The boys think they done got you. They beat on the chest, oh, we done got him. They took his body down and put it in a borrowed tomb. Oh, yes. And they thought it was over. They put a big stone over the door to make sure that nobody could get in to steal his body. And they put him in a tomb. I want you to know something, that even right now, people will put you in a tomb if you ain't careful. Because what they'll do is, see, they thought if they put him on the cross and put him in the tomb, it would be over. It would be quiet. They wouldn't have to worry about him anymore. You wouldn't have any more praising. Nobody talking about him. They would shut him down. But I am a afraid right now that some of us in here right now has let folk put a tomb a, a stone in front of our praise y'all better hear what I'm trying to tell you and if you ain't careful now they'll tell you they don't take all that if you ain't careful now they'll tell you you don't have to praise God like that if you ain't careful now they'll put a prayer tomb in front of your praise but I want you to know something right now I don't know about you, but God has do, done too much for me for anybody to put a stone in front of my praise. I'm so glad. And every now and then, I surely get happy. And every now and then, I got to jump and leap because I think about the goodness of Jesus when folk would put a stone over me and thought I was finished and thought it was over and thought they'd done everything they could. But oh, I got a God that he can roll a stone away. Anybody know what I'm talking talking about uh, when you've been down uh, won't he roll a stone away when you've been hurting won't he roll a stone away when they backbite you won't he roll a stone away uh, you better hear what I'm talking about uh, and since I'm free uh, and since I'm free uh, I let no man no woman no devil in hell uh, separate me from the love of God uh, I'm gonna praise him uh, every chance I get uh, I'm gonna bless him uh, every chance I get uh, you can put duct tape on my mouth uh, and I'm I'm gonna bless him. 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 And so they put guards by the door to make sure, and I'm finished. But the Bible says that when the women got there, uh -huh. oh, thank God, I wouldn't go to, no, I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't pass the near church, they even got a woman in there. Amen. Because women will come check on you. 
and let's go see if he's dead for real. Because <laughs> the brothers, the brothers said, well, little lady, little lady got him. We'll pray for him. <laughs> I know. I've been sitting out there long enough. I've been up here. I know. <laughs> and so the women went to check on him. And they said, who will roll a stone away for us? For he is very heavy. And I am so glad that the enemy thought they had Jesus. And God rolled a stone away. See, now God showed his love for you and for me. But when he rolled a stone away, he showed the love for his son. Now, see, this is very important. Because what happened on Friday night, God turned his back on him. Because he took the sins of me and you. He took the sins of the world upon him. And so God cannot look upon sin. So the Bible said that it went dark in the middle of the day. God turned his back on him. And so now, now that he's done what he's supposed to do, now that he has been blessed, now God is going to roll the stone away. So now he's showing love for his son. I don't know about you, but ain't that a good God? Ain't that a good God? When I messed up, he still loves me. When I messed up and I walk right, he still loves me. But here is the part, and I'm going to end it right here. I'm going to say like the choir says. The choir says, meet me. In Galilee, I want you to look at the text, the very last part of their hymn, and the last section of this text. The Bible says, tell Peter and the disciples to meet me in Galilee. Now, I don't know if y'all got that or not. Now, he said the disciples and Peter. He called Peter out by name. He didn't say James, John, Bartholomew, Andrew, Mark. He didn't say any of them. He said, he said the disciples and Peter. When I saw that, I said, oh, I'm all right. If I, when I saw that, I said, I'm all right. Because Peter was the one that denied him. It was Peter that the one that cursed and said, I don't know him. It was Peter that didn't buy and cut the man's ear off. It was Peter who said, I don't know the Lord. But he says, Peter, I forgive you. I know you were wrong. I forgive you. I know you say you didn't know me, but I forgive you. I know you cursed and say you didn't know me, but I forgive you. You betrayed me. You walked away from me, but I forgive you. He said, Peter, you can meet me in Galilee. I said to myself, if Peter can meet him in Galilee, surely Archie, Romeo Fair can meet him in Galilee because I had no walking right but he still say you can meet me in Galilee if you wasn't talking right he still say meet me in Galilee I don't know about you but every time I think about verse 8 I get my shout on because one of these old mornings one of these old days I want to meet him in Galilee with all of my problems with all of my issues with all of my troubles his blood his blood anybody know his blood has washed I said he has washed I said he has washed my sins away I want to know this morning anybody in here want to meet him I said do you want to meet him I said do you want to meet him in Galilee if you want to meet him give him praise I said praise him I can praise him because I'm going to meet him in Galilee. Worship him. He's worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy. And so the Bible says that it was on Sunday morning that the women went to the tomb because the Sabbath for, for Jewish people is Saturday. And so they rested on Saturday and early Sunday morning. They went to the tomb and found out uh, that our Lord uh, was already risen. I told you Friday night, uh, but Sunday was coming. I told you Friday night, that was halftime. But this morning, I'm telling you about the big comeback. Uh, I'm telling you about the greatest comeback in history because he got up uh, with all power. I said he got up uh, with all power. I said he got up with all power in his hand. 
bless him Sunday morning changed everything because and I'm finished everyone who's physically able please stand on your feet because see what happened I told you Friday that but was a preposition it could be a conjunction but in this text it's a preposition I learned that in middle school if you put a but behind a statement, it changed everything that was before it. They put him in a tomb. But Sunday morning changed everything. But but Sunday morning changed everything that happened before that. Now what, what I'm saying is not just in the text. Sunday morning changed everything in our lives. But Sunday morning, because he got up, we got another right, another opportunity to, to gain right to the eternal life. If it had not been for Sunday morning, Sunday morning changed everything for us, for you and for me. Because if he still would have been in the grave, Nothing would have changed. But Sunday morning, when the stone was rolled away and he was gone, it changed everything. Now for somebody, this Sunday morning can change everything for you. If you accept him as Lord and Savior. The way this world is now and folk trying to put you on a cross, Folk don't like you and don't even know you. Folk hate you and never even had a conversation with you. Folk talk about you and couldn't even point you out in the crowd. I wouldn't leave here this day if I didn't have a Savior. Because folk would talk about you and even try to kill your character and put a stone in front of it so that you'll never, never overcome it. Because the truth will just sit flat, but a lie will run way down the road before the truth get out of the bed in the morning. Want to kill your character? But I came by to offer somebody called Jesus. This Sunday morning can change somebody's life. Many times we look around and see who's going to move, who's going to be first. And let me make you understand something. The person next to you probably need to come up here too. Because my grandmama told me that they have no heaven nor hell to place you in. And, and, and Brother Droves, I knew I was free when I stopped worrying about what people thought. See, when you're still worrying about what folk going to say, you, 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 you're in trouble. Because see, folk are like you Monday and won't speak to you Tuesday. And so you look around, you be up and down, up and down. Your emotion, they're controlling your emotion, trying to run around, make somebody like you. I know somebody that loves you. Before you took your shower, before you comb your hair, before you brush your teeth, before you put your hair on, he know how you look before you did all that. And he still loved you. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of love I look for. That'll love you in spite of. So there be one today who does not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, come now and give your life to Jesus. And this, this, this invitation is for salvation. Because you can be a member of a church and still not be saved. And I see it all the time because the Bible lets us know we will know them by the fruit they bear. You can't judge anybody's heart, but the Bible says you will know them by the fruit they bear. And so regardless of your church attendance or your church role, 
Because your name being on the roll here does not mean your name going to be on the roll up there. Folks who are worried about where they're going to be buried at, I ain't worried about where I'm going to be buried at. I'm going to know where I'm going. I'm going to make sure where I'm going. Because this old body don't mean nothing. <laughs> now, this call is for a church home. If you are searching for a church home, we offer Greater St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church. For the Bible instructs us that only those who are planted in the household of God can flourish in his courts. What, what it means is that you had to be planted somewhere so you can grow. And folk think you can grow by watching TV. No, 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 because once you cut that off, it's off. <laughs> you need a body of believers. You can't call them and tell evangelists on TV and tell them, and tell them to check on you. <laughs> All they want is your check. <laughs> Is there one today who wants to be a part of this congregation? We would love to give you the right hand of fellowship. This Sunday morning can change your life. This chancel rail is open for prayer. We ask that those of you come and cast your cares upon the Lord for the Lord carry for you. <laughs> And if, and if you feel like you don't have anything to pray for, pray for me. <laughs> pray, pray, for, pray, pray for somebody in your neighborhood. Pray for the, the fella or the girl you, you talk about all the time. Pray, pray for them. Put them on your heart and put them on your mind right now. Whatever the situation is, whatever your situation is, whether it be financial, health, or whatever the relationship, whatever it is, put it on your heart and your mind right now. Because the Bible instructs us that God does search hearts and search minds. He knows what you're going through. See, I, I don't need to know your business. God knows all of our business. Every last one of us. We ask those if you wish to kneel or if you're physically able to kneel that you would kneel before the throne of God. And kneeling is just a symbol of reverence to God. And kneeling also is a symbol of the posture of your heart. That your heart is supposed to be humble before when you go before God. Because if you high and lifted up, where God going to go? Our Lord and our God, we, we thank you now. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping us and thank you for delivering us. Thank you, Father God, that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us of our sins. Our sins of omission, our sins of commission. Surely, Father God, there's some things that we have done that we should not have done. Forgive us. And surely, Father God, there are some things that we should have done in your name that we did not do. Forgive us. Father God, you understand and know we read it all week long that surely the spirit may be willing, but the flesh is weak. Strengthen our hearts and strengthen our flesh, Lord God, that we will walk right, talk right, and that when somebody see us, they'll see only a disciple of Jesus Christ trying to carry out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father God, whatever our position in life, whatever our position in church, our number one position is servant of the most high God. Let us be a humble servant. Let us be a faithful servant. Let us be a loyal servant to the one that was so loyal to us on Calvary's cross. Father God, we have those who are standing around the chancellor rail seeking you. Whatever it may be, Father God, I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is, but I know you know all things. 
you know all hearts and you know all minds. But most of all, Father God, you've said in your word over and over again that you love all, that you care for all, that you forgive all. We thank you for being that kind of God that all means all. It does not mean somebody from that side of town or the other side of town, but it means all. It does not mean black or white, but it means all. It does not mean rich or poor, but it means all. It does not mean saint or sinner, but it means all. We thank you, Father God, that you love us all. So to the young girl who feels like she's not loved, there's love in Jesus Christ. For the young boy who feels like he's not loved, there's love in Jesus Christ. For, for the senior who feels like they're alone and has nobody, I, I, I call on you. See, if you call on Jesus' holy name, the Bible says he will come in and sup with you. If you call on his name, his love will show up in your dining room. If you call on his name, his love will show up at your coffee table. If you call on his name, even when you're driving the car, he'll sit down right beside you if you call on his name. We thank you now. Most of all, we thank you for 2,000 years ago. Early Sunday morning, you rolled the stone away. Sunday morning, everything changed. Now we got a right to the tree of life because he has risen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, he's, he's better than that. He, he's, better, he's better than that. He's better than that. Anybody know there's power in the name of Jesus? Anybody know there's power in the name of Jesus? I don't know about you, but the more I, the more I say it, the better I feel. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, I, oh, I really feel like preaching. We gonna? I'll tell you, the more I say it, the better I feel. If if y'all if y'all don't mind, do just stand on your feet one moment for me. I want y'all to help me out with this, and, and y'all see what I'm talking about. Whatever your name is, whatever your name is, whatever, whatever your name is, at the count of three, I want you to shout your name. Whatever your name is, one, two, three, Archer. I ain't felt nothing, I call my own name. At the count of three, I want you to shout out Jesus. One, two, three, Jesus. Don't you feel it? There's power. There's power. I said there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power to roll stones away. There's power to heal. There's power to set free. There's power to deliver. There's power. Sunday changed everything. Now there's power name of Jesus. Stop calling all them other names and call that name. I know you got 2,000 friends on Facebook but none of them names can do anything for you but Jesus.
because what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. What peace we often fought for, what needless pains we bear. Just because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have a wonderful, wonderful resurrection afternoon. It was a blessed week. If y'all miss revival, y'all miss something. And, 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 and my wife said, I know you're tired. And, and I guess I am. I guess I'll figure it out next week. I don't know. But the revival does something to you. It, it, it does something to you. It just, it just, it just stirs you up. And, and I don't know about you, but I get excited when I hear good preaching. It ain't got to come from me. They said, well, sit down and rest yourself. I don't know how you sit down on that. I can't sit down on that. And Cousin Kelvin, they already called me. The, the senior pastors in the family are already jealous. You done brought the baby down here. Ain't <laughs> God is awesome, amen. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. It was an awesome week. Folk got healed. Folk got delivered. God is awesome. Because God was in the house. And the only reason you miss it, because you wouldn't. <laughs> Because sometimes, I'm, fin I'm finished, but sometimes we try to pick and choose when we're going to come. And you don't know who's going to bring your word. Now, everybody brings a word. Everybody brings a word. But I remember, you don't mind Sister Sheila? But Sister Sheila told me, now that word was for me. See, some nights, some days, the word is for you. That's your word. So don't, don't try to pick and choose. Just come. And so for folks say, why you don't put out who? No, because I don't want them to come because a certain person preaching. I really don't. Just come because the word is coming forth. Yeah. And like I said the other day, if, if, if I put Dylan up to preach, y'all better come here and preach. Because if ain't nothing, he going to have a word. God is good. We're going to go home and, and, enjoy the rest of your, and enjoy the rest of your day and be safe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next week. Nobody, nobody, no, please, nobody don't get sick this week. I'll see y'all next week. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. It is so wonderful to see again Brother Henry Simmons Sr. God is awesome. God is awesome. When I first got here, he put me in his truck. And y'all want to know why I know where all y'all live? Not only he showed me where his, his class members were, he showed me where everybody else lived too. Just in case, Pastor, you want to know. And, it's, and it's, I said, oh yeah, I know just where you live. <laughs> so I bless him for a class leader like him who will make sure that I go by and see everyone his members that was sick. Because sometimes people think the pastor know, but if nobody, I don't have, I, I got the Holy Spirit, but I don't have the other stuff. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Reverend Tucker, let's go home. May the peace of God rest with you. 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 And may the peace of God rest with you.